thanks for joining me. Here in the churchyard of Llanfiangelarath in Carmarthenshire lies the little body of Sarah Jacob, 12 years old, who died of starvation on the 17th of December in 1869. Also buried here are her parents, Hannah and Evan Jacobs, her doctor, Henry Harris Davis, and the vicar, the Reverend Evan Jones, all of whom stood by and watched this needless death happen. Out of pride, ignorance, and above all, the belief that they would be proved right, they were complicit in her needless death. Sarah lived on a small farm a few miles away with her parents and siblings. She was a pretty bright and serious child. And then at the age of 10, she began to exhibit strange symptoms. She had stomach pains and fits and fell into a stupor. She had trouble retaining food. Her doctor, Mr. Henry Harris Davis, the surgeon from the nearby town of Flandisil, could not identify the cause of her illness, but prescribed a diet of milk, rice and oatmeal gruel. Sarah couldn't even tolerate that, and in the end only took a teaspoon of apple puree. As far as anyone knew, that was the last thing she ate for the next two years. Her parents were convinced she did not eat or drink, but survived without food. She had, they claimed, made them promise never to give her food again and could not even bear to hear it spoken of. The Reverend Evan Jones had known Sarah as a bright child at Sunday school. He was sceptical and critical of her parents' claims, but eventually he came to believe them and wrote a letter to a newspaper about the miraculous little girl. Word spread rapidly and Sarah became a celebrity. She sat in the bed she'd not got out of since she fell ill, dressed in ribbons and with a wreath crowning her dark hair, reading aloud or singing hymns for the visitors who were admitted to a few at a time to her bedroom. They left gifts and money. At first they came from nearby towns, but her fame spread and the newly built Cardigan and Carmarthen railway station at Pencada saw thousands of visitors from as far away as London. The medical establishment clashed with the religious supporters of the miracle. Mr Davis, Sarah's doctor, declared he was still perplexed, but nothing is impossible in the sight of the Creator. People began to accuse her parents of fraud, and they protested their innocence and suggested proof should be given by inviting people to observe her fast. This was done. A committee organised several men to sit by her bed. No one actually saw her eat or drink, but not all were convinced she didn't do it secretly. Her little sister spent a lot of time close to the bed and they weren't permitted to search the bed or get too close to Sarah. It proved nothing. A Welsh journalist, John Griffith, suggested the exercise were repeated, but with four nurses from Guy's Hospital and daily visits from local doctors. This time strict measures were put in place. Her parents' bed was stripped and taken away from the room and her little sister kept away. The bed was stripped and changed and Sarah was under 24-hour observation. Within days she was suffering. On the fourth day Dr Davis examined her and found no cause for concern but noticed she was not so cheerful. By the seventh day it was obvious to the Reverend Evan Jones that the child was dying. He begged her parents to end the watching but they were confident that their marvellous little child would be sustained as before. Dr Davis checked her pulse and said she was in no danger, but got her uncle to have a word with the parents to get the watching stopped. It didn't work. Sarah was surrounded by medical professionals, but their aim was to prove or disprove the phenomenon of Sarah's survival without food and water. At no point did they intervene to save her life by giving her either. Once Sarah had become agitated and delirious, it was obvious she was near death, and although the nurses begged her father to allow her some brandy and water, he recalled the vow he'd made to Sarah and refused. Dr Davis put an end to the watching, but too late. Sarah breathed her last with the nurses still present. An inquest followed and an autopsy which found traces of food in her stomach. Sarah's parents were considered to be the ones responsible for her death, tried and sent to Swansea jail. None of the other people suffered even reputational damage. The Reverend Evan Jones blamed the railway for making her an object of interest, but he forgot the part his letter had played in doing just that. He was buried here in this railed enclosure. Henry Harris Davis continued to practice for decades and is buried under a large tomb. 
Sarah was buried towards the edge of the churchyard in a now neglected corner. She was joined by her parents, baby brother and eventually four of her sisters who never married. Her brother, Evan, married a widowed member of a local gentry family, whose sister, by an odd twist of fate, later became the second wife of Henry Harris Davis. But Dr Davis had fathered two illegitimate children with his servant and was tried in an affiliation case in 1893. His wife divorced him the following year and he was forced to resign from the Board of Guardians in Newcastle Emlyn. It was probably Sarah's brother Evan who put the memorial stone on the family grave. The letters are shallow and hard to read now. The truth of how she survived for two years while appearing not to eat lies buried there with her.